oh my God, I could write a better book than this. Then why haven't you? Let's talk about that on this episode of Horrible Writing. That will that never, never work. work. You can't, you can't publish, publish that. that. Seriously? No, 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 Oh my God, that's bad. You probably should find, find other hobbies. hobbies. You ever, you ever learn, learn how to spell? Stop. Be happy. Quit while you're in it. Don't bother me. I've seen better people. Do you really want to do And grow my third grade. Give it up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Hey everybody, Paul Sadine, your host for Horrible Writing, or of Horrible Writing. (laughs) God, strong start, right from the get-go. So hey, How many times have you heard that about yourself? How many times have you said that about yourself? How many times have you written that on a frustrated Facebook post? How many books have you read that you could have written yourself or done a better job of or something similar and actually chased your dream of being a published writer, maybe writing for a full time? We do it. We do it so often. We are so critical of things. And for those fleeting moments, we believe in ourselves. And then it's gone. Dissipates. Disappears. Fades. Evaporates. In a wisp. In a flash. Truly catching lightning in a bottle. Talk about an exercise in frustration, right? Where are you at in those moments? When you're reading that story watching that movie, that play, and you're thinking about that novel, you're thinking about that short story, you're thinking about that script, and you compare it to your work. Now, I know comparinitis isn't necessarily healthy. Uh, Sometimes it can be a good grounding mechanism, a good tool to keep ourselves in check. It also can serve, as long as we're being honest, critical, analytical, you know, it, it can be a good catalyst to action. But what happens between those moments when you say, I can write a book like this. I can write a better book than this. This script is weak here, 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 and here. Mine has its own problems, but for the most part, it's just as strong as this. Why am I? I could do this. Why am I not doing this? What happens between those moments and actually executing? Where do you go astray? And again, like all the previous episodes of this show, I'm not talking to everyone. There may be a small portion of you who have downloaded this or who are streaming this that I may be talking to. I'm talking to those of you who really want to do this, though. Those of you who want to finish that story, finish that book, finish that script. You want to get published. You want to sell it to somebody. You want to put it into an audio drama and hear a show being created from it. You feel that fire. You're not the passive movie watcher. You know who they are. The people who are stuffing their face with the popcorn, laughing at all the bad jokes, who are getting excited by gratuitous violence or action with no plot. You're not them. You're that person who is sitting in that theater, feeling what that character is feeling, dreading what they're dreading, hurting when they hurt, laughing when they laugh, loving when they love. You are feeling because that story has been so well done that you can't help but feel moved by it. And you feel that burn. You feel that desire, that pull, that tug, that thrust. I need to go right. I need to be at the keyboard right now. I should be doing this. I want to work on my story again. You know those thoughts. You've heard them. You might have heard them even recently, even this morning. 
Maybe you're listening to this on your way home from work. Another eight hours of doing something that you don't enjoy. And you stole 10 minutes at lunch to work on that manuscript. And it just wasn't enough. It's never enough. God, I want it so bad. That's who I'm talking to. What's stopping you? What is it in your situation that is preventing you from reaching that dream? And why are you avoiding the awkward answers? If you are. Now, if you're diligent, if you have your routine, if you're disciplined and you're working on it every day, maybe with a day off, maybe with the weekends off, I get real nervous about going more than a weekend. But you're diligent and disciplined and you're working towards it. Hey, great. I might not even be talking to you because you're doing. I'm really focused on those people who understand and who have experienced what I was talking about in that movie theater, reading that book, that tug, that pull, that burn. I can do this. I can write this. I could write better than this. Then why aren't you? Why are you only writing one day a week, two days a week? Three days a week. Why? You can't find any time in those other four days to write? You're busy. Yeah. The kids. I I know. The job. Exhausting. I get it. All of those things happen to all of us. Those writers that I'm trying to emulate myself. If you listen, they've been there too. And I try to keep that in mind. When I'm tired, when I want to take a break, when I want to give up, but they persevered, they plugged on, they kept going, they worked, sweat equity, they didn't give themselves the excuse, the rationalizations, they they resisted all of that. And I'm sure it wasn't easy. I'm sure of it because I go through that too. It's not easy. It takes consistent behavior to reinforce a behavior change. You have to do those things even when you don't want to. It's a lot like taking care of yourself physically, going to the gym. It sucks. It's hard. At the beginning, after the high of starting a workout routine, a couple days into it, maybe a week or two into it, you start fading by the month After you started, you never go to the gym anymore. You're just paying a monthly bill for something you're not using. Writing isn't different. Making those sacrifices is not different. Sweat equity. Be careful of rationalizing a way why you're not doing it. I I can say that till I'm blue in the face. There are still going to be people, even if I had a respectable platform upon which to stand, which I do not because... As of this episode, I'm still not published beyond my audio dramas and my short stories that I put up for the people who care to go read them, right? So who am I? Well, that's legitimate. I'm not even going to try to argue it. Who the hell am I? But I know that I'm writing every day. I know, (laughs) you know, this, this year alone, I've written over, well, actually coming up on 250,000 words. They may not be good words. Maybe about 50 of them are. But I'm getting closer. I, I, I'll i never get published if I don't write them, even bad writing, even horrible writing. I will never get published if I don't put those words down. My story will never be told if I don't tell it. What about you? If you can do it, if you've said those words, why aren't you? What is stopping you? Life will never get less exhausting. It, you'll always be busy. It doesn't matter if you're 18, if you're 48, 78. The older you get, the shorter your days get because physically, you just get tired. I am not in the shape I was in my 20s. And I have very long days. But I have to do 
for it to be done. And the same for you. There are ways that you can do it, but you have to have the discipline to do it. I released this episode because I want to make a change in the world. I don't feel I do. Doing horrible writing and some of the hidden messages or not so hidden messages in my stories, that's the only impact on the world I have. And I want to make tomorrow better for somebody than today was. I don't say this to poke somebody in the eye, to give you crap you don't need right now because the boss has been on your back for a month straight. It's not the purpose of this at all. But I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't always remain candid. Empowerment through candor. If you want to do this, if you think you can do it, then you do it. And you do it routinely, every day of the week, with balance. But balance doesn't mean writing whenever the desire comes around or whenever you get an hour, because it has to be an hour. That's not how reality works. So I don't want to sound like a hard ass. I don't want to sound apathetic because those things, well, I can be a hard ass, but I'm very empathetic. That's half my problem with the world is I'm too empathetic. And I see a lot of people doing a disservice to themselves. A lot of writers, they're frustrated. They, they, they become depressed. Very serious stuff instigated by their inability or perceived inability to do what they want to do, to write. Like everything worth having in life, the investment comes at the front. You've got to put in before you get. You owe that to yourself. Are you putting in? Thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening. If I have not ticked you off, please go over to Apple Podcast. Give this show a five-star rating and review and tell your writer friends and anybody who cares to hear about horrible writing. Tell them to subscribe and how much they'll enjoy out of this. Go over to paulsading.com. Check out everything else I have to offer over there, including the audio drama Subject Found, Who Killed Julie will be coming. We're getting closer. Diary of a Madman, very close, and Atheist Apocalypse is already upon us. If you want access to exclusive stuff, you can become a patron, but this show will always, as far as I can tell, (laughs) remain free. Who knows? Who knows what the future will bring, right? All right. I Again, don't walk away feeling like you were just beaten down by one more person in your world. That's not what this was about. This, this may have been the locker room coach pep talk, but as a listener to this show, you don't listen to be cuddled and coddled. I cannot imagine I've got a single listener who wants to be cuddled and coddled. I think I've made that abundantly clear in the uh, previous 14 episodes. I just got to be real with you. Empowerment through candor. All right, go forth and be epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse, at Writing Horrible, and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less.